This is a record of the mess in the cabins and around the place that I have inherited. This is our old cabin, the one that Margaret and I stayed in when we first came here. And as you can see, it's nestling nicely under the Hargania trees. But Margaret will also see that it's grown a lot older. And the old fireplace is now completely covered with moss and stuff. This is the outside store that we used to use as a kitchen and I'll show that again in a minute. The table and chairs that I made for us outside, table and stools, are still there but are also looking a bit dilapidated. Kuya, one of the people to welcome me, was Bazila. There's Bazila bringing some of my dishes back from this morning's breakfast. Yambo, Bazila. Yambo. Havari. Mazuri, Havari, Tosubuy. Havari, Mazuri too. Uh huh, Sawa. This then is the sight that greeted me. <clears throat> when I walked in the door. In the corner there's a very efficient wood stove above which we can dry clothes. These are the shelves that I made in 1970. And I was pleased to see that since they were made of good wood, that they still survived. But what a hell of a mess that was all over them. Moving round the room, we've got the fireplace, which because of the, now, the charcoal burning stove, the fireplace is now not used. books over on the top and then round to this side of the room just one hell of a mess of dishes Main room now boasts a desk. And also a new addition is a radio. In the bedroom area now, these are the cupboards that I made as a wardrobe. and they're clogged up with a hell of a load of rubbish. Here the bed, which is quite comfortable, good sleeping bag. But the mat that used to be above the bed, the nice Randy's mat, is now missing. The low light level indicator is showing here, and as you can see it's dim in the cabin, so you may not be able to see much. But it is on a hell of a mess of stuff just lying around, covered in dust. The table that we used to put uh, Fiona's carry cot on, and which I made a large cupboard underneath, has now been replaced by a chest of drawers, which is quite useful, but uh, needs a lot of repair. 
there's a chair in here, a plant of some description, I don't know what the hell it's in. The only two bags of mine that came, and those are the ones that were carrying with me, Sabina lost both my advance luggage and my unaccompanied luggage. I'm hoping they'll arrive in the next couple of days. As I record this, there's some nice little mice running around, but they're very friendly. Bazilo has just made this bed and cleared it up and straightened out the sleeping bag after my night, first night back in our old cabin. And it really was good to be back. But as you can see, and this is only one cabin, there's a hell of a lot to sort out. Just outside the house and near the table and stools is the famous little hypericum tree where the chimp was hiding beneath that and Margaret didn't realise and put Fiona outside and when she came out the chimp had Fiona by the arm. As you can see here everything has to be carefully locked up and here's the store is opening the locks, that's that. And uh, we're going to have problems with this because there's a hell of a lot of lock, padlocks and a hell of a lot of keys. Now the inside of the store that I used to have as a kitchen with the cupboards, you probably can't see them because of this low light. Fungula ikubadi, kuli, you. Fungula, deal. I made all these like caravan cupboards so that they would be mouse proof. But it's a hell of a stay. Each day the men bring in pieces of paper which show where they've been. Um, and where they have found the gorillas. These are the, the trackers, the pistas, and these have been out to see Peanuts Group and Beats Me's group today, the 8th of December. And uh, now just going over where they have been and how many gorillas there were in the nests. Today is a payday, so I have to interrupt this because the men have come up to get their salaries. Oh, Basila! They get their pay and then they have to... Andika. Aliisha Andika. Oh, Natena Mutu Ingini. And they then sign that they have received their salaries. Some of the men actually can't write, but they get someone else to write for them. As you can appreciate, this is a big day for them. They're all looking forward to getting their salaries, and they want to go down the mountain early. <laughs> So they will now go down and enjoy themselves, and the other group will be for the next three weeks. This is an example of just some of the keys that Bazila has left me, so I've got to try and sort out all these damn things and sort out all the locks. And now the men... <laughs> now the men are going down. <laughs> As you can see, they're making a big show of it, but they're very happy to go down because they've been up here for three weeks. Hi, I'm Og. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Marisa. It's really wonderful to be back. I really can't stress that enough. It is wonderful. I had a marvellous reception from the men, especially Nime and Kanye Urbano and Mazira. And there are quite a few of the men who worked here before who remember us. And they all say Yambo and Nabari. They all asked how you are. They even remembered your name, Margaret. And uh, they remember Fiona as a baby. So, uh, as you can see though from the other stuff, <laughs> uh, earlier on in this tape there's quite a bit to be done, but I I'm not pessimistic. Um, the there's plenty of scope for things to be improved and the men are all the men are all great they're all willing to work um, 
so we can get things done. I'm hoping to send this tape back so that you have it for Christmas, so Merry Christmas. Um, and we'll get you out here because you must see it. Yesterday, watching the gorillas, group five was absolutely fantastic. Marisa would have loved it. Uh, I mean, the, the young ones are climbing on my knee and all over me on my back. And, oh, it was just wonderful. Um, the, Marisa really would love it here because the wildlife is all over the place. There are mice running around in the house and um, squirrels outside and bush buck and um, all sorts of things. I'm sitting on the same tree, you'll recognize it, Margaret, where the chimp was. And the camera, I haven't got a tripod yet, the camera's stuck on the table. Sabina codged up all of my luggage and so far all I've got is my hand luggage. There is a small Honda generator here, and by cleaning the plugs and stripping it down a bit, I managed to get it going. And that will charge up the batteries as it's doing now, and hopefully give us some new seed. Charge up others. Right now, this may not look much better than it did in the previous shots, but everything's been taken out, washed, the shelves have been cleaned, washed, and polished. And all the dishes are now clean. Knives and forks I put inside boxes so that when the mice run around they can't pee over them. And I've cleaned up the battery and the radio and put the radio in a better position. It's a very old radio though. And the reception is pretty bad. Now we're having a midday break and I'm making a cup of tea. Ditches had all got clogged up, so the men are now cleaning out the ditches. Carter! First of all, they're cutting away all the grass and then digging out a lot of the rubbish. The African hoe is being used here to haul out and dig out the ditch. Ditches are being cut quite a way up from the camp, 
so that the water will drain right through. They've made deeper ditches and two little bridges and the water will now run away Here are some of the men coming back off patrol. Well, this is the report of day two. We've done a lot of tidying up, cleaning out of my house, and as you could see there, the men have done a lot of work clearing out the ditches and making sure that the heavy rains here drains away completely. And the men, Kanye Ruguano and I, had a good chat, try and sort out all the problems. And we're all confident now that we can get something good going here. Um, that's how long it'll take us. Maybe months, maybe a year or two. I don't know. But the rest of the tapes will be a history of what we're able to achieve. And hopefully it'll be something good for all of us here and both for the people of Rwanda. Christmas is now over and all the celebrations have finished. Today was a change of shifts and the main his crowd have gone down. So what I'm going to try and do now is give a record of each of the cabins in the camp and what the present state is of each of them so that we can show what work is needed to make all of the cabins habitable and fit for any of the new researchers that come and live here. We'll start off with this cabin here, which is Diane's house, the one which she called the mausoleum. The house is rather ugly in this end view. Um, there's a cage at one corner where Diane had some parrots. And on the left hand side here, you can see a large Hargania tree, which bears a plaque in memory of a young lady who was supposed to come and work here. There's a tent pitched outside now, and the guards have to sleep in there, because only last week just before Christmas, we had another break-in, and they stole an old radio. This side gives some indication of the ramshackle nature of the place, and the terrible state of the roof. It's been suggested that the thieves, or whoever, and murderers gained access to Diane's cabin by cutting their way in through this panel here on the night she was murdered.
This gives some idea of the general state of the kitchen area, which is just inside the doorway. Walking through the doorway from the kitchen area into the lounge. On the walls at the side are gorilla pictures, still hanging are some balloons from our Christmas party. And here the main lounge area. You can see from this chair what state the floor is in. In this chair next to the bookshelves is a huge doll gorilla. In this room stuff is just everywhere. This used to be a guest bedroom. This is the storeroom and it is impossible to do justice to the chaos that exists in this room. This only samples it. Just a few yards from Diane's cabin, set deep in the forest, Well, I thought I'd put a little bit on the tape here to wish you all a bon ami from Rwanda. I Happy New Year. It's hard to believe, but looking at my diary, I see that tomorrow I'll have been here four weeks. Well, I'll have left home four weeks ago. And if the next six months pass as quickly as this one, then it won't be long before you're all here and enjoying camp as much as I am.
as you can see from the tape, there's been quite a mixture. There's um, situations where the camp is in a mess, or parts of it were in a mess. A lot of that's been cleared up now. My cabin here has been cleaned out, and as you can see, it looks a lot tidier, a lot cleaner, and a lot more homely. Especially now that it's got my things around here and not other people's things. The other cabins, as you'll see from perhaps this tape or perhaps the next, some of them are still needing quite a bit of repair. Um, some major and some minor. Most of the stuff that you saw in Diane's cabin earlier in this tape, that requires the biggest amount of work. And I think what I propose to do there is to turn it into a sort of general room, a meeting room, a place where we can go in the evening, and also a library. You also saw the sad parts um, of the graveyard, and it is tragic that they had to finish up like that. There's absolutely no real reason why I did have to finish like that at all.